What's good team, El Wapo here. So, uh, another car video, sorry about this, but I wanted to get this out just as a quick follow-up yesterday. After I finished uh, the video about Charlatan, um, I realized that there is a very crucial lesson that's in there. And uh, I'm about to give it to you now. The Liar versus the Lion, coming up next on Beautiful Lies. You don't know what you're doing. Oh yeah, gotta stay hydrated, people. Gotta stay hydrated. Okay, salute and salutations from El Wapo. Um, not gonna get deep into the weeds today with you guys about Charlemagne or charlatan, as I call him, uh, his victim. Uh, I covered as much as I feel I needed to yesterday when I, I shot the video in response to Kwame Brown bus life. Shout out to you, uh, Kwame. The, the work that you're doing is really incredible and you have a heart to actually help people with your platform. And that's why you're going to continue to be blessed. There's no doubt in my mind, but there's a lesson. And I told you that El Wapo is the gap filler. So I want to fill a gap for you guys. And this is going to primarily be towards the fellas today. It's so funny the way that when Charlemagne got on and first allowed Kwame's name to slip out of his mouth, it was as a warning to other people to not mess with Kwame Brown. Now, he did it with bad intentions. It was abundantly clear and uh, very apparent to anybody that has known a liar or a hustler or a dude that thinks he's slicker than the streets which charlatan surely uh, is. That's, that's the type of dude he is. And he, he, he went real low with Kwame. Got a story to tell you guys, and I'm gonna get back to Kwame and charlatan. Okay, charlatan, charlatan. I went to private school first through ninth grade, okay? Very expensive very protected private school. 10th and 11th and 12th grade, I went to public school. 10th and 11th, I went to a, a, a magnet school in the city. Started Air Force Junior ROTC there. Moved up through the ranks real fast. My 11th grade year, I was the deputy flight commander, deputy, no, deputy group commander uh, for the school. So I was number two in command. You couldn't be the actual group commander until you were a senior. Anyway, I was out sick one, a couple of days. And I came back and one of the guys that I did physics with, his name was Philip, was standing in the lunch line. Now I'm in my blues. I've got my silver cord on or, or rope to show my position in school. I was six foot two at this, po at this point. Uh, the ladies loved me. I really was an arrogant asshole. I just was. I really thought my shit didn't stink. And I thought I was untouchable. So I am see Philip in line. He's in the lunch line. Halfway up. I walk up to him. And genuinely like, hey man. Uh, could you go over some of the assignments with me? that, Or some of the work that I missed in physics? He was like, yeah, sure. I talked to him for about 30 seconds. And then I decided I was gonna stay my butt right there in that line and get my lunch. Didn't go to the back of the line and wait my turn. I decided I was gonna stay there. So I'm talking to Philip and everything and I hear some chatter and I hear this guy turn around, or a guy behind me, I turn around. And I was like, what'd you say? And uh, he was like, man, you need to get to the back of the line and, and get your lunch. And I had seen the dude around and he was real quiet. He was shorter than me, much shorter than me. And I think if I was in 11th grade, he was like in 10th or he might've been in 9th. I think he was in 10th grade though. So I was like, yeah, psh, whatever. I turned back around, face the front of the line and verbatim, I heard this dude say to the guy he was standing next to, I'm about to fuck this nigga up. 
And I said, you ain't going to do. And before I could get the word shit out of my mouth, this guy got down and scooped me up. He reached down and grabbed me below my knees and picked me up over his shoulder and dropped me over his back. My head hit the wall. My head hit the floor first. I was completely dazed, completely dazed. Before I knew it, I'm trying to get up. And dude is on top of me like a Bengal tiger, man. He's got one arm around me, elling me out. Uh, and he, so we're, we're face to face like this on all fours. So he's got me in a, 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 a I guess that would be a guillotine choke. And I'm trying to get up. And he comes and locks my leg and locks his hand. So he's choking me and pulling my opposite side leg. Man, I was fading out. Fading out. Worst ass whooping I ever took in my life. Worst one. And I got up and I had a big hematoma on my head. It was a Friday too, because we were supposed to be doing a leadership weekend, which was a lot of fun for ROTC. So Mr. Levine, shout out to Mr. Levine. Mr. Levine passed away last year. He was one of the uh, class counselors. I think he passed away last year. Mr. Levine pulled this dude, dude's name was Antoine. That's his real name. And I believe we're Facebook friends now. Haven't seen him in a while. Pulled him off of me and everything. I was going out, man. I I'm telling you, tunnel vision. I couldn't see. He was choking me smooth out. So, come to find out, this little dude was an uh, all-American wrestler in, like, high school. Beast beast yo if you've ever been in an altercation with a wrestler talk to them cats that do uh Brazi brazilian jiu-jitsu the only folks that they worry about is wrestlers because of their their um their hand strength and stuff like that but i digress yo he called us into the office we smoothed it out and that was that i was wrong and i learned a valuable lesson today you have to genuinely leave them quiet dudes alone. Leave them alone. You look at uh, Discovery Channel and stuff like that, and you see those lions out there on the Serengeti, right? And what are the male lions doing? Normally, they're just laid out. They're uh, having a, uh, a bask or a bath in the sunlight, rolling in the dirt, stuff like that. They're not messing with anybody. But let one of these, you know, even if the female lion comes over there and messes with him, he jumps up and roar, roar, you know what I'm saying? Let's circle this back and bring a full circle. This is precisely what happened with Charlemagne, which is the lesson I learned with Antoine. You can't be out there joking and playing and thinking that you're better than anybody else. And I'm telling you, that epic ass whooping I took is probably, it's gotta be one of the top three best lessons I've learned in my life. And I'm glad it happened in my younger years. Me taking that, that butt whooping probably has saved my life from popping bad in situations where I have no business to. It definitely taught me a lot about how to read people. So I wanna make this clear as well. I am not likening Kwame Brown to Antoine from high school because see Charlatan you messed up bro you actually um, are not going to get responded to with violence from Kwame see Kwame is cerebral all right Kwame's a thinker he's about to Magnus Carlson that if for you that don't know Magnus Carlson is one of the best chess players ever to walk the face of the earth um, He's about to Magnus Carlson you, man. And uh, he's already doing it. You run in your mouth with ill intent, trying to be slicker than the streets, has earned you now the resurgence of this old case. It's back in the public eye. You know, um, their family's getting, getting shined, as they deserve. They deserve to tell their story and stuff like that. And now they're looking for the other two dudes that supposedly were there in the story. Do you think that when these cats are found, they're going to defend you? 
You messed up, bro. You messed up. So I'll leave y'all with this. The liar never wins against the lion. Great talking to y'all. I'll catch up with you soon. El Wapo, out.